four or five minutes in right now to each of the used restrooms. We'll take a slight break or even sing any of our work. We'll have closing prayer and close staff, so we'll open up our next church service. Come to bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for everything you've given us. Much of it we don't understand, some of it we don't even know we got. But thank you. Be with us we go to the next service. Guide and direct our thoughts. We will be always behind you. We are asking your name. Good morning. 
that you will bring joy and gladness to each and every one of us, and that we will want to be faithful workers for thee. In the name of the Lord. And another new season. And I'd like to welcome everyone again. And uh, and now for our opening hymn, we'll have to open it up. Uh, hymn will do 515.
we know that someday it is not going to be possible. But that we would take the opportunity that we have now to come closer to thee, to study and learn thy word, so that when that time comes, that we will be able to stand. We just ask of you that we have confidence as they lead out. That we will continue to grow and push forward to be witnesses to thee. And be with each and every one of our other sister church members throughout the world as they need today. That we will be our own goals to be witnesses for thee and to go and spread that gospel. Now we just ask of you, Angie, as she delivers the message today. And we know that it comes from my throne of grace and that we will all be blessed and touched. And that we will go away here being rich and blessed. And now I just again want to thank you and ask that I'll be able to see more of you in my name. Amen. <laughs> But uh, they have some snakes that have stripes like tigers. 
But some of the snakes, they are, they, they have a hood on them like this. You know that kind of cobras? And, and when Miss Mary and I were in South Africa, we saw a, a trap in the dirt where a snake called a Mozambique spitting cobra. And you don't even have to get bitten by this snake. It can spit poison at you. So you don't want to get around that guy. But, uh, well, yeah, it eats frogs. That's another thing that snakes do. Keep the frog population in, in control. But uh, when I was six years old, anybody here six years old? Oh, you're four. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, when I was six years old, my parents took me to a snake farm. Have you ever heard of a snake farm? No, I bet most people never heard of a snake farm. But in the country of Brazil, they have a snake farm. Now, Brazil is a big country like the United States on the southern part of the world. And you might say, why do they have a snake farm? Why would anybody want to farm snakes? Yeah. Well, you know, in Brazil, people work out in the jungles. And sometimes they get bitten by a poisonous snake. Well, they be that too. Why do those poisonous frogs can be interested to see whether the snake is a problem or not? I think the, the snake's probably faster than the frog. But in any case, they take these snakes, and I watched this as a little boy, and a man with high top boots and gloves goes in this pit where all these snakes are, and he picks a snake by the back of the neck. And the snake doesn't like that. You don't like to be taken by the back of the neck either, do you? No. So the snake, the snake is upset, and the man puts a little jar with a, a piece of uh, rubber over the top, and the snake puts his poison out in the jaw. And you know what they're able to do with that? They're able to make medicine, good medicine, that when people get bitten by a snake, they can give them a shot of that medicine, and they're okay. But you know, there's one kind of snake in Brazil that I'm sure they wouldn't let in that snake farm, because it would probably eat up all the other snakes. And that's a big snake that we don't have in this country, so you don't have to worry about it. It's called an anaconda. And I've seen an anaconda, and if the head of the snake was here, the tail could be back by the door. It's a big one. And it's so big, in fact, that it can swallow a small cow. I've never seen it, but I've seen pictures. And while I was in Brazil once, I was busy with an Adventist pastor. You know, we have Pastor Rob who speaks to us on a Sabbath morning. Well, this was Pastor Otavio. And Pastor Otavio was an Adventist pastor in Brazil. And he had many, many churches in his district. This was not a rich area. They didn't have a place to baptize people like we do up here. Some of you have been baptized, some of you have watched people be baptized here, and there's a, a glass a wall and water, and, and Pastor Rob and some of the other pastors, they baptize people. Well, Pastor Otavio had to baptize people in the river, in the jungle. And so Pastor Otavio put his robe on, and he goes down into the water. And the church is standing back behind Pastor Otavio, looking as he's baptizing people. And so Pastor Otavio is facing the congregation with the people who are ready to be baptized. And you know how they get baptized in our church. We put them under the water. And Pastor Otavio said that just as he lowered the person under the water, the congregation, instead of being very happy, instead of being very excited, they all step back. Oh, it is wrong here. Something's not good. And then Pastor Otavio said he felt something going between his legs. It was 
snakes. Can you imagine such a thing? Well, nothing happened. The Lord apparently shut the mouth of the snake and made the snake not want to do anything bad. And so the, the baptism went on. But the, and the snake went away. Aren't those interesting creatures, even some of the scary ones, that God has created for us? There's a reason, I think, that God creates all these different animals. is to just show us what a great God we worship. Just like we're all different people, but we are God's creatures. So, next time you see a snake, don't get too close. You know, I'm not going to tell you here how to tell the difference. Your parents can do that, maybe. But uh, they're, just remember, they do a good work. They're here for a reason. And God created all these different animals that make up this wonderful world. Okay, boys and girls, you can go back uh, to your seat now.
this church for us to go in. And that we will continue to give so that it can continue to work throughout this community. And that we can be workers and we can stand fast for thee. We just ask this in thy name. Good morning.
And I would like to turn the service over to Angie. I'll just give you a brief summary. Abraham, before back school started, give you a brief summary. We're going to take the Sabbath school. Uh, Angie and her husband, Bob, they are the lay evangelism directors for the Iowa Missouri Conference. And, uh, and Bob is also a past, pastor at uh, Davenport, Iowa, where they live. And uh, Angie uh, goes around and speaks at some of the churches. And uh, one of her big passions is uh, talking about Sabbath school um, and what we can do to do our part. And so at this time, we'll turn it over to Angie. Thank you. 
out with the person and getting to know the person, you've earned the right to share the information. And I can tell you a lot of stories around that time, but you have to earn the right. Don't share biblical information with people unless you've earned the right to do it. And then don't ask them to make a decision unless you ask yourself, do they have the information to make this decision? And we shouldn't assume that people have the information. Just because maybe you went to an Adventist school, does that mean you have the information? Just because you go to an Adventist church, does that mean you have the information? Last Sabbath, I, I told you earlier that I believe Sabbath school, we should have more people in our Sabbath school than we have in church. Last Sabbath, in my Sabbath school class, after the class was over, a lady came and she sat beside me. She waited until everybody left, and she sat there beside me. And she said, Angie, I just love this class. You know, it's just awesome. I love learning here. And, and I said, I know you can stay for church, and, you know, you're going to go out and everything. And she's been there for like maybe three months now. And she goes, yeah. And I said, well, what do you think about Sabbath? And she goes, I don't know. I haven't really studied it, and I don't really know. I said, do you, does it seem weird that you're coming to church on Saturday? I'm not going to ask her to get baptized because she doesn't have the information. She doesn't even know 